Christ taking steps both official and unofficial to curb the number of people coming to the country, highlighting the way in which migration has become a political flashpoint ahead of the federal election. According to figures obtained by rioters, the ratio of refused visitor visa applications to approve ones was higher in recent months than any point since the height of the pandemic. Immigration officials rejected more applications than they approved in January, February, May, and June 2024. At the same time, the number of approved study and work permits dropped, and in July, Canada refused entry to nearly 6,000 foreign travelers, including students, workers, and tourists. The most since at least January 2019, rioters reported the shift appears to be informally and not detected by a change in policy. You see, we Africans, we have a saying that whoever that is holding me to the ground is equally holding themselves. Because as soon as they are standing, I'm equally standing with them. So, some of these countries, when they reform these their laws, it only but amuses me because, first and foremost, some of their citizens are naive when they easily buy it from the politician that the migrants are their problem. The migrants are not your problem. Rather, your politicians lack the ability to be able to plan very well in terms of infrastructure, in terms of creating of jobs, in terms of your social welfare. They fail to plan. So, being that they are intoxicated by power, they will just sell the immigration issue to you, push the blame to foreigners, and you will buy it. Thereby, they will win election, they will still go back to the drawing board and adjust the immigration reforms again. Yes, and one thing some of these citizens forget is that you say you don't want foreigners, but every country needs a certain number of foreigners in their country to be able to fill in their labor shortages. Because even there are jobs that the real citizens can't even know themselves. Because some of them, they grew up as children having bread on their table every day. They don't know what it takes to wake up every morning and you have to fight virtually for everything. Nothing is given for free, unlike here in the West. You know, sometimes it amazes me too when people in the West come and say, Africans are poor. Africans are not poor. We pay everything cash. Yes, you want to buy a house, you pay cash. You want to buy a car, you pay cash. But here, if it is possible, some people will even be buying their underwears on credit. That's why you see that most of them here, they are frustrated because their life is centered on credit. Some of them, if you even hear the amount of credit they are owing, it is alarming. You can't even imagine it. So immediately, they see you a foreigner in their country doing well. They are jealous of you. They are envious of you. Some of them, they will start pouring their frustrations on you as a foreigner as if you are the one making the laws in their country, as if you are the one running their country, as if you are the one sitting in their various parliaments. But that is not the case. So, if you are anybody from third world country, this time around is not the best time to migrate. But if you choose, better get yourself well acquainted with the news. And always have a plan B because this is election year in most of the countries in the West the elections are taking place and the only thing their politicians are selling to their citizens are migration that is the rhythm of the moment that every politicians in the West are singing and their people are really dancing to that too